is food science for chefs. Unfortunately, I don't think this is a simple yes or no question. It's a sometimes yes, sometimes no question. And really, it depends on you. So in this video, I want to talk about how can we figure out if food science is for you if you're someone who likes to cook or bake. And I'll also talk about some careers that actually combine culinary and food science. This has got to be one of the most common questions I receive from people. And today I went to check my inbox and had this email from Jack. And Jack writes that he is a current student of colonology, but now understands uh, the terrible hours chefs work, which is very true, long, very difficult hours. And now he is considering food science. And I think Jack's concern of long hours as a chef are uh, very, very true, right? When you're a chef, you work evenings, nights, holidays, basically when everyone else is enjoying themselves, you the chef are working, yes, giving them food. Food scientists, on the other hand, I would say mostly work nine to five. Sometimes they might have to do plant trials, manufacturing plant trials, but a much more regular schedule with, you know, the five weekdays. So being a food scientist versus a chef, you know, even though they both work with food, it's a very different job. So if you're thinking, should I be a food scientist? I actually will put some video links in the description because I have a lot of other videos talking about what is food science. But in this video, I want to cover the careers that combine food science and the culinary arts. And specifically, I'm gonna talk about what type of positions or jobs these are. If this type of job is right for you, how can you tell? What would your daily life be or what tasks are these roles responsible for? And then what sort of certificate or degrees do you need to get these, you know, part food science, part culinary jobs? Let's start with what are these jobs or roles that I say combine culinary and food science. And I think there are two very common terms. I would search for research chefs and also a culinary scientist. So type those into Glassdoor or LinkedIn and see what type of jobs come up. Let's talk a bit about what these types of people do. So think about like your favorite chain restaurant, say like Chick-fil-A or Taco Bell. Have you ever wondered like who is behind that new sandwich Chick-fil-A launched or the new product that Taco Bell is coming out with in a month? These are probably due to people like research chefs. It is really someone who is at the intersection of culinary and food science that is behind, you know, what is a restaurant's menu and what products do they choose to, you know, stop making and what new ones will be added. And to do this job well, you really have to know uh, product in innovation, but also what emerging trends are coming down the line. Now, how this usually plays out in real life is a lot of products are driven by marketing. So this person probably works very closely with marketing who comes to them and gives them a brief of a new product they're envisioning, right? So they want some new space ice cream, say. Now you, as the research chef, then you go back to the kitchen and you start making prototypes or using different ideas, trying to uh, make new products that would fulfill the criteria that marketing just gave you. And then once you nail down, I don't know, three or four of these space ice creams, then you go back to marketing or a panel of food scientists or other people at your company. And you say, here's my four prototypes for space ice cream. You do a little taste test. That's always fun. Then with these, say, four prototypes, there might be like a voting system at your company or maybe marketing just gets to pick but they'll probably pick the top prototype, maybe the top two for you to continue working because they want to either launch that product on the restaurant's menu, or maybe they want to launch it in the grocery store. And what's really critical at this point is here, now you have to start thinking of how to mass produce this space ice cream. So what you used prior to this was really your culinary background. You're in your, you know, a small kitchen, just making the prototypes one by one. 
but now you really have to switch to your food science knowledge because maybe this product is being made in a manufacturing plant. You're gonna make it, you know, in batches of a thousand pounds each. Or you have to think about, well, how does the average person, you know, cooking or being the chef at Chick-fil-A, how are we gonna make sure they make this consistent and right every time? So you kind of have to change gears. Really a research chef oversees this whole process, right? They get the brief from marketing and they start to make, you know, their new ideas on a very small scale, but they always have to be thinking, is the product I'm making, will I be able to upscale it to feed thousands of people to produce on a very, very large scale? And this really requires like a very specialized skill set that is both a culinary background, but also a background in food science. When it comes to degrees and certifications, there's like a lot of different names for very uh, similar things. So let me give you some terms to look into. You can see what, you know, a degree in culinary arts and food science is called near you or at a, you know, a college near you. But here are some common degree names. Culinary arts, applied food sciences, sustainable food systems, culinary nutrition, culinary science and product development. And finally, food and beverage industry management and some organizations that might really be of interest of you to join to become a member is the Research Chefs of America. And I would also check out the Culinary Institute of America. If you have any questions about these careers at the intersection of food science and culinary, leave them in the comments. I will get back to you. But until then, I'll talk to you next time.